I had my hot rod hang out this past week on. And someone made frosted oatmeal cookies. A lot of them. And they left them. So now I'm going to eat them. Oh. All right, guys. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get to work on opening up these boxes and get these tie rods. Figure out what I gotta do. Get some measurements and get these tie rods cut down and tapped and all this other crap. Let's do that. Tie rods, tie rod ends. Like I said, I'm not all about buying stuff out of catalogs, but when it comes to certain things, obviously safety, you gotta you gotta consider safety first. I measured my width. I measured the width of my steering arms on the T. What I did, I know you guys, you know, some people say, oh, you could use the plumb bob and all that other stuff. You're probably right. I probably should, but I didn't. So what I did was I just got the steering so I got the wheels so it's towed in an eighth of an inch, which I learned through you guys when I did the race prep on the 52B car, that 32 coupe that I raced up at Pine Tree. So I got the wheels set up so they were straight, came up with 47 inches. And when you're cutting a tie rod length, you need to subtract three inches from the overall length from the eye to eye measurement, and that's gonna be the length of your tie rod. What you want is you want enough room for the tie rod ends. 47 was my set, my center to center measurement, minus the three inches put me at 44. I got it measured here, 44 inches. I'm gonna cut that, and then I'm gonna thread in my tie rod ends. Uh, I'm not sure what my day looks like tomorrow, but if I can get, the steering box start getting the steering box mounted i need to do a little bit more modification on the driver's side header and the tube of the steering the steering tube itself and what i mean by that is i need to bash it in with a sledgehammer once that's done and i can get the steering column where i need it to be where i want it to be then i can get it mounted again i already had it temporarily mounted before if i can get it temporarily mounted again oh i'll show you guys i told you guys probably one or two videos back on the t my buddy joe came over and he gave me a section of a 40 ford frame that he had that he cut off the frame it's this it's this mount right here this is the actual mount for a 40 ford steering box 40 to 48 ford so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this mounted onto the driver's side frame rail and get that steering box mounted. I need my tap. Bought these on eBay probably five years ago. Uh, because I had to do this exact same thing with the exact same kit from Speedway on my 29 sedan. Right hand 11 16 by 18 pitch, right hand thread. What I need to do is I need to spray some luby lube in there. And I need to get this tapped to that thread so I can thread this tie rod in there guys I'm super excited to get back on the 34 I'm not I don't know what the word is I'm looking for but I don't want people to think I don't want to work on it or I don't love that car 
And the reason why I stopped working on it just this past fall, coming into the fall, was we kind of been picking away at it all last winter, last fall, all last winter, all the way through the spring until I started driving my 30. And I'm just big into having fun and doing stuff with my family and Allie and friends and taking, you know, trips and doing hot rod stuff and going on cruises. And I wanted to just do something fun, kind of just, it was just mindless. And that's what that tea was all about. I wanted to breathe some new life into the channel. This is a, a very sought after high dollar hot rod. And everything has to be done a certain way everything's sandblasted everything's finished everything's painted it's a lot of work and if you've never gone through that process like i did on the 30 and and uh, same re same thing i did on my 29 sedan like there's so much work that went into that car and time and thought that it's nice to just whip something together that doesn't take a lot of thought it's actually fun like this got to the point where I wasn't having fun anymore. And truth be told, that tea, I have, I've made as much money as I have into that tea from YouTube since I started building it. So you guys watching these videos and watching the commercials and nothing to do with selling t-shirts and all that other stuff through the website, just this old hot rod from YouTube, I've made as much money as it cost me to buy that body um, since I started making them video these videos just goes to show you I don't have a ton of money into that car the motor did cost me something three years ago I think two or three years ago when I bought it but I'm not including that because that motor is probably gonna end up coming back out of that car at some point and that's gonna go into Ali's Ali's racer I want to build a crazy crazy for that. all right let's get this thing uh, tapped and ready to rip if you see these jaws on top of these vices, these newer modern vices, maybe some of the older ones have it too. Those are actually pipe clamps. I didn't know that. My buddy Pete taught me that and he taught me it without even knowing he was teaching me it. He was asking me to do something. He goes, oh, flip that around. That's a pipe clamp. I didn't know it. So now you know. These jaws on the back of this, that's a pipe clamp. do some research on the ham or speedway or wherever figure out what tools you need to do jobs like this so you're not stumped and you're not waiting for parts and tools to come in so 11 16 18 pitch right hand and left hand thread get get these taps they're not that expensive Whoop. they're not that expensive and they're invaluable when you need them. Ooh, you clunked her head. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, wow, that's not going on. Might have just been some metal shavings in the threads, I don't know. Must have just been some crap in them threads, that's all. I think that's gonna be plenty. I wanna get an idea of where the middle of the tie rods, the threads are. Because when you measure that three inches, they give you that measurement. That's roughly halfway down the threads. Which is right about there, so. 
I'll definitely have plenty. If I bottom out that driver's side or passenger side tie rod, it means I'm doing something wrong. Make a quick measurement and see what I have for length. So I need 47 inches total is what I need. From center to center, a half an inch. See where I'm at. All right, so 46 and three quarters. All right, so we got a quarter of an inch of thread on each side, which is not enough, I'm aware of. How's it going, everyone? <clears throat> Tuesday afternoon. Just going from work and I'm gonna get to work on the tee. What I'm gonna do right now is I need to get, I need to get this steering box mounted on the frame. But as you can see here, it's kind of hitting the header. So I need to, I need to <clears throat> kind of cave this in a little bit. I need to modify the steering tube. And what I'm gonna do is just heat it up and bend it in with a hammer, just to get a little bit of a clearance, because that's what they would have done back in the day. And what I need to do is I need to get the steering wheel and column over more to the passenger side, because as of right now, it's hitting the door or it's close to hitting the door. I know with the other door in, it'll probably be uh, another half inch over, but it's just not enough room. And I'd show you earlier in the video, I have this mount that I'm gonna end up using. I'm gonna get to work. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind these rivets off. These are the original rivets they used back in back in the 40s on that frame to rivet things together. These are hot. All right, I'm not getting too technical here. I'm just gonna just gonna roughly mark where the steering box is, and then I want to mark on the header where the steering box passes the header. Because like I said, you can probably see down there where I've already kind of collapsed it a little bit. Unfortunately, it's just what I have to do in order to get this to work out the way I need it to. I'm committed to using this steering and that's what I need to do in order to use it. So let's get the steering column out of here and then let's get these rivets ground off and slide, see if I can slide this mount into that frame rail. I'm hoping the, the height of this 40 Ford frame at this point here is gonna be close or similar to the Model A. I'm hoping this is either gonna slide right in it or slide right over the outside edges. It looks pretty close, so I haven't measured it. I'm not even gonna bother. It is what it is. I'll make it work, whatever I gotta do. All right, so I just undid the header. Header bolt undone to drop this header down to give myself clearance so I can get this steering box out of here. I need to take the bolt out of the dash that I was using to hold up the steering column. person job when I put it in here. I need to get these rivets drilled off of the or ground down. It's just four rivets on this mounting plate. And, uh, and then uh, I'll get it start to fit it on the frame rail. It's pretty close on the back side. And the Model A frame rail tapers down towards the front. So there'll be a little bit of modification but Excuse me, nothing major. Let's get these ground down.
I'll still have to pop these top rivets out. <laughs> it fits on the frame perfect like it was made for it. Oh, I'd love it. You gotta love it. Alright, so you can see here I got all the rivets and everything cleaned up, punched out. And you can see on this mount, the back of the mount is actually wider to accommodate the frame. And then the front is a little bit sh uh, smaller or narrower. It actually fits over the frame rail perfectly. So what I'm going to do is take this hole. This is my front hole that I kind of made a mark on my frame rail roughly right there what I think so if I would have not knowing how a 40 forward frame is set up I would assume it's set up where the steering box is on an angle like that and that's probably pretty realistic if I were to follow the follow the frame rail but at this point I don't know yet what I need so I, I can't mount this to the frame rail yet what I need to do is I need to get the steering box put back in I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna probably probably sandblast this so I can get some good surface to weld to and then get some nuts welded in here because it's gonna be the bottom one won't be bad but the top ones, these two inside the frame rail are gonna be extremely difficult to get to once this is mounted on the frame. The bottom one's accessible. And as you can see, you can see it there. I need to get that steering box put back in here where it needs to be and then, and then modify this tube, which is gonna be here and here. And then the header, you can see where I got to modify the header, right there. But I'll do that after, I'll do that after I get the steering in place. So what I'm afraid of is, I'm afraid that the steering box is perfectly straight or parallel with the column. And if you look at it, it pretty much is. So, what that's telling me is, is if I were to mount this perfectly straight, that means that my steering wheel is going to be outside of the car. So that means I'm going to have to compensate for, I probably am going to have to do something like that. What I end up may having to do is, if I'm going to weld this onto the frame, I may just end up notching the frame. And actually setting this setting this mount into the frame some and that will that will give me a little more room either that or cut this mount I don't know I got some figuring out to do so if anything I would have to cut this here pie cut that pound this up same thing on the back side Although it would be a hell of a lot easier to just put it like that. But like I said, I lose, I lose quite a bit. All right, so what I did was I just slid the column back in the car. I'm just figuring this out as I go, guys, just like I do everything else. This is not a how-to video, but if you happen to learn something from it, then cool. But I'm certainly not doing a how-to video. I don't know that the angle I'm, I'm going to be at is going to work with the angle I need. Obviously, it could work with a 40 Ford, but I'm not putting it in a 40 Ford. Which is
right, so I'm trying to get this lower mount here just kind of held in place for now. Steering wheel placement, I think I'm pretty good. So I guess it's really not all that bad. Pretty close to the head, like really close to the head. If I drop it down some and put this mount under the frame, show you guys what I'm working with here can you see the daylight ah, there it is right there whoa so I may just have to kind of bump this piece in on the steering column there I think we're gonna get that one bolt actually you know what no I'm gonna make a mark and I'm gonna bang that in now because I want to try to get this steering wheel over maybe just a smidge I don't know. I'm going to have to give that a couple love taps, I think. So let me make a quick mark. Let's pop that header on and see where I'm at with that at the moment. I mean, I think I'm going to be okay, but that, that mount kind of pushed that steering column over just a touch more, so it may not be okay. I don't know. So let's go in the garage and I'm going to start heating this and I'm going to bang this in. Alright, I'm back. Just trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this. I can't really hold the header so I'm just going to have to kind of try to put it on my table like that, clamp it. So that's what it looks like. I don't know how that's going to fit now. I'm hoping it won't affect the performance too much. It should. It's just a flathead. It's not too much of a truck or nothing. So just moving a little hot rod. So what I do have, if, God forbid, if need be, I have this better. I also have this header here that there is no doubt in my mind would fit. So if I need to run this one, I will. But the only downfall is I think you can see here where it was heated and wrinkled. It kind of comes out. And I don't know that it's going to work. I don't know what this came from, what it was on before. You can see where the tube was moved. I have a couple other headers as well. 
But let's go see if this will fit now that I heated that up. Let's see. I think once I modify that steering column, just kind of hammer that a little bit, I think that's going to give me more than what I need. about an eighth of an inch for it rubs. That gets me closer. That got me closer. Ellie's home. Hi, honey. Hi. 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 Did you say something? What's doing? Trying to get the steering and the exhaust to fit in, in just harmony. Pure harmony. Pure harmony. That's like me. I'm pure harmony. This is a horrible angle, Michael. Yeah? Yeah, you better delete these out. What? You better delete this yeah, out. I always say that. Yeah. Too much oxygen. try to get this column back in this one last time and see see if that made any difference or see if it made enough difference where I can actually make it work close I'm so close and heading in the right direction All right, guys, so I'm going to just give you a real quick overview, just point out a few things that I did on this mount. What you'll need to do if you decide to run a cross steer on a Model A or with a Model T, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys just a quick overview. All right, so obviously that's the steering box mount. Uh, you guys saw what it looked like earlier in the video. I just welded these two nuts, these two right here, so that's hot still. You can see some welds down here and then welds down on this the same portion here but on this side um this were the portions where it was riveted to the bottom of the frame and then there's this piece of metal here this piece of metal was on the top of the mount here however there was more metal than that this was this was like that there was a lot more metal to it. So I ended up taking this piece out and try to set this up on so you can see it. So this piece was here and then this piece here. So I ended up removing all of this material 
what I first did was I, I had left it kind of like that and then closed it in. So this would have sat on top of the frame, but I was still having interference with the steering column with the back of the head. In order to eliminate that issue, I needed to drop the whole steering box and the mount down. So that's when I decided to section the frame and to mount. Then I cut this entire flange off and then I ended up putting the mount flush with the top of the frame. I modified the bottom of the mount to sit up underneath the frame rail. This took me a couple hours yesterday. And now I got it to a point where it fits and now I can weld it. What I ended up doing was I moved this all the way forwards. You can see where I did the same thing on the bottom side of the frame. See how I notched it here and here. I notched it more on the front than I did the back. And the reason I did that is because the mount will kick this way, which will force the steering column towards the passenger side. It centers it here in the hole and it centers it up on where the column drop is. So I went five eighths of an inch and then half of an inch. So it's an eighth of an inch difference. So it's deeper on the front, not as deep on the back. So let's get the steering column up in place where it needs to be. And I'll show you guys my next step. So what I want to make sure is, what I want to do is I want to make sure my column sits right where I want it to. And just here. So I need to get a bolt that fits in there. I had two of them, but God only knows where they are at this point. I have clearance where I can move this around. I've already had it bolted in place with the steering box and column already, you know, bolted to the car or clamped to the car where it's gonna be. So I know this is gonna work. So unfortunately I'm gonna end up having to either, I ended up having to dent the bottom of that because it hit right here on the top of the steering box, but that's fine. That's not really gonna affect much. Uh, All right, so I got the mount in place where it needs to be. I got it clamped so the bottom is tight up against the bottom of the frame rail see it it's right up in there the nuts are welded on the inside the frame cleaned up on the bottom and the top of the frame rail so what I need to do now is get this tacked in place get this welded up here and then get underneath all welded up too and then I should be able to take the steering column in and out kind of at my leisure so let's get this thing welded up finally Finally. Well, oh, wait a minute. I'm not grounded. I will need to weld a few spots on the inside at the very bottom, but I won't need to do that until the whole car is blown apart and I clean the frame. I got some welding to do on the underside of the X member where the pedals are located as well. But again, I can't really do that right now. So at this point now, steering columns mounted.
brakes together. That, that motor will fire. I know it's gonna fire, so. I guess the fuel system, steering, fuel system, brakes, quick, quick wiring job and uh, be off to the races.